from Modesto.Africa. And why am I looking sporty? Do you not agree that I'm looking very young and with it? People are like, no, not really, not particularly. Look, don't be hating on me, okay? Because this topic is just for you. God, please don't let a single thing fall as I position for this. This week, I want to talk about the people you have surrounding you. Let me get my chair. People you have surrounding you that you believe are in your corner. And I just want to know who exactly do you have doing what for you? Who do you have doing what for you? Because what we know for sure is a person cannot make it. Wait, wait, my cap, my cap. Aninka, do you see my cap? I took it from one of the girls. <laughs> I have fun on these lives. Listen, we cannot do life on our own. Oh, I so wish we could. I remember there's a joke I said to one of my bosses, uh, like almost two decades ago. And you know, we've gone through a certain challenge. I don't know whether it was an employee relation challenge or whatever it was. And, and I was just talking about just how amazing this world would be if there were no people. Obviously it was a very silly joke for a person very early in her career, but I was like, everything would be perfect if there were no people. So listen, if we could do it on our own, wouldn't it be great? Cause you just feel like, look, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know how I want to get there. I just want to get there, but then, ah, there are people that come, you know, come in between. This is the truth that we cannot run away from. I remember I did a video on this three and a half years ago, almost four years ago. I did a video on partnership, the power of partnerships. There is no way, no matter what you say, what you can do, how you can do it, there is no way on this planet that you can be a self made man or woman. You got help from somebody somewhere, somehow, whether it's going to be family that had to accommodate you, like my family right now, my kids keeping quiet so that I can be on this live and, 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 you know, have full attention. I mean, I digress, but this morning when I was working out, guys, like I have this thing, I need my breath. I need to be in the zone. So I won't even allow people to breathe loudly. Like you can't even sneeze when I'm working out. So this morning, my kids were tiptoeing. They already did their workout. I did another workout. They tiptoed and stayed away until I was done with my workout. That's how dramatic I get. So I want you to know whether it is family, whether there's somebody who thought you had potential when you were growing up at school and they pulled you aside and they said, listen, I see this potential in you. I think that you could go into this field and you will do absolutely wonderfully. Whether it is somebody at work who says, wow, you know, I'm seeing what you're doing and what you're contributing. Where did you get these things from? And you say, well, you know, I just picked it up as I go. And they really encourage you. Whether it's somebody who took a chance on you and invested in your business or somebody um, who came along and said, look, I've been where you are right now and I can walk you through it. Every single person has had somebody somewhere. I mean, if you're going to say there's nobody at all that helped you, let's say God then, right? Let's just say God kept you, God protected you, God prospered you and you are where you are. If you will not admit that any other person played a part, but the truth is more people play a part in the success of self people than they would like to admit. Now, I am not here to debate whether you made yourself, whether, you know, everybody around you was ungrateful and they weren't supportive and you did this all by yourself. What I want to talk about in this series, and we're doing it today and we're finishing on the 22nd, we're finishing on Friday, is to talk about distinguishing the different people because sometimes we make assumptions and this has hit me in the face a couple of times. I made assumptions. You know, one of the assumptions that we usually make as we're going out and achieving something is that at least my family, like at least my family is for me. And that could be a safe assumption to make, like, right? My, at least your family should be for you. They're not always. So don't make assumptions about who is on your camp. Find out who exactly is on the camp, what they can do, and how you can leverage your support system, leverage their presence, their expertise, their networks, for you to get from where you are right now to where you want to go. And it is a Karibu Da Esther Jacob Idasi. Welcome, Da Esther Jacob Idasi. I'm so glad you're here. And, and welcome to everybody else. So as we're starting out this series, I want to talk about the different types of people we have around us. And there's some words that we throw around to talk about the people who are with us. Um, and I'd like to challenge you this week, but that's forever challenging people. Listen, as I challenge you, I'm challenging myself as well. I would like to challenge you to ask yourself, how are you making the most of their presence? And then we'll go a little further with that. I'll ask you what's in it for them. 
Because sometimes we just want people to do for us and we think we're entitled to it. You're my parent, you're my sibling, you're my spouse. I don't know, you're my friend from childhood. What about this? What about this? I helped you out when you were starting out. Ooh, that's a big one. So people are like, look, if I helped you out, you're going to help me. Something happened somewhere. YouTube has left me. That is a shameless thing to do, YouTube. All right, people, we'll just continue here and I'll catch up with YouTube later. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm feeling happy. I got my people on, right? So I want you to get these definitions right as we're st starting out this week. And this week is not just about a week of seeing Modesta live. And I'm going to try to look as sporty as I can, guys. If, if you see me do a push-up or a plank this week, do not be surprised. I'm coming out in my youngest self in the on the eve of me turning 40 is when I'm trying to look young. But I'm, I'm coming at you with sports terminology. Like if you are a champion and you're going for the gold, who is in your corner? Who is rooting for you? Who is in your support team? Who is in your championship team? I want you to think it through. So listen, I'm doing this and I'm speaking. I'm still taking notes and I'm speaking. I want you to make sure that you can do the same. Today we're starting with simple things of terminology. First of all, we've, we've, we've just settled that there's no self-made person at all, anywhere. You, were, you got help. And if you've ever called yourself a self-made person, please go. Even if it's that person, Kigengeni, for those who don't speak Swahili, I can't help you, who let you have, you know, free mangoes or who, who let you have, um, you know, chips, my eye, on credit until you could pay just so that you do not starve all day. Somebody somewhere helped you out, okay? So let's let's have that humility to say I did not make myself, which is why I made Thursdays for me on social media, uh, you know, like a thank you Thursday. I need to remember the people that have stood with me, that continue to stand with me to help me get to where I want to go. These people I'm thanking, these are the people that have been on my championship team. All right, so go to Purpose and License Academy, go get that video on the power of partnerships. You're going to love it. That's going to be homework number one. Number two, I want you to get these terminologies right and then really be honest with yourself. Who is really for you? Who is really standing with you? And so maybe when I get these definitions down and you hear them, you will then see whether you truly do have or maybe you do and you haven't quite tightened um, the relationship you have with them so that you can really leverage their support and of course, be a support for them as well. So I want to I want to start with the basics. We call a lot of people our hero. Just yesterday, I wonder if, oh, I said this to my mom, but I'd written on, you know, there was there was an article featuring my dad. My dad just passed on the 1st of May. And, and I wrote, I'm so, so proud of him. And I was, you know, I wrote to my mom, like, you know, like he's my hero. I mean, my dad will always be my hero. Um, I want us to, to, to look at that word hero. What do we mean when we say a person is a hero? Hero definition, and I got this, I just simply Googled these words and, you know, got the definitions to share with you. A hero is a person who's admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. So when you say somebody is your hero, you're admiring them. They're out there and you admire them for what they've done. Some heroes we get to rub shoulders with. I am one to be known to be taking selfies with people I admire. Yes, I have. And for a while it worked very like, whoa, Modesta, you know, you get to rub shoulders with them. Well, you know what? I just met a couple of them at events. I don't necessarily have access to them, but it was nice to take a selfie and to post it on my profile that I was in certain circles that I could rub shoulders with these people. But it still remains that a hero usually is a person who is distant, a person we admire, they're out there, right? They're not a person we usually have access to. That's our hero. One of my heroes, though, Dr. Obiagele Ezequesili, I may not even be saying her name right. I have every intention on this planet to have her as a mentor. Oh, yes, I do. But right now, she remains my hero, my shero, right? So that's number one. Number two, role model. Who's a role model? A role model is a person looked to by others as an example to be imitated. And so if you have a person 
who you're thinking, wow, like when I grow up, I want to be like them. I have so many role models. A lot of them are younger than me. <laughs> a lot of them may not even necessarily have as much experience as me, but I am looking at them in their lives, the things they are doing, the things they have done, you know, the way they carry themselves, the way maybe they, they stand on integrity, that they're resilient and they keep trudging through. And I tell them, you're my role model. Like, I want to be like you when I grow up. Somebody looked for me last week from Kenya. And he actually also shared another article that, um, about my dad that was published, um, I think on the nation, uh, on Sunday. And, and he said, Oh, the first time I heard of you was through somebody he actually mentioned her Felicia and, and she speaks highly of you. And I actually was thinking maybe I should send the article to her, but I thought to send to you, I'm like, Oh, thank you so much. I love F. And you know, she's like, I want to be like her when I grow up. Now somebody else might be like, are you being sarcastic? No, I am not. If you guys know Felicia Masaki, if you know of Mimi Ninani and you see the work she's doing, and if you meet her and see who she is and how she handles everything with grace, yet she's this phenomenal mind doing great things on the earth, you would understand why she's one of my role models. So a role model is a person, you look at them. It could be their character. It could be their competency. It could be, um, you know, maybe it's, it's maybe it's their life in entirety. Maybe it's their journey to what they've done um, professionally. Maybe it's the way they're, they're doing work and life. There's something about them. You're thinking that person is my role model. Like I'm fashioning my life. This is a person that is an example for me to imitate. That's a role model. And again, a role model, you may have access to them. Like in this era of social media, sometimes we have access to a lot of uh, role models. I certainly do. I follow, I follow a lot of people. This is how I, I learn a lot of the things that I learn. I don't formally go for schooling for everything that I know. So I will follow people who I think are role models in this area. And so I have a lot of role models, whether it's going to be in family, whether it's going to be in business, it's going to be um, as a woman that is broken, I don't know, glass ceiling or whatever it is that I'm looking to grow in. Uh, you know, I, there are some people I would like to um, to emulate. It doesn't mean I necessarily want to be them, but they're qualities that they have that I'd like to grow, you know, in myself. And just recently, as I was reading more and more of what people are saying again, I'm, I'm going to go back to my dad. I'm like, man. So I wrote down, I wrote down his qualities. I'm like, yep, definitely role model. So ever since then, I've endeavored more and more to fashion my life after those qualities that I'd seen. Some of them I already had. Others I was like, yeah, you know, maybe it wasn't my thing. But I now, now I'm, I, you know, I'm really taking them forward. So a role model is a person you look up to as an example to be imitated, an example to be emulated. Then there comes a mentor. What is a mentor? We use that term a lot. Who is a mentor? They're an experienced person, a trusted advisor. I remember reading this book. Oh, what's Tony? Tony um, Dungy's book. I'll come back, guys. This is a series. I'll come back to you with this book. So he's been a coach on the NFL, you know, the National Football League in, in, in the U.S. for decades. And he wrote this book. Um, it'll, it'll come to me. I really love that book. And I used to quote from it widely. And he said that a mentor is not just a person you look up to a person that you admire, a person that you would like to emulate, you know, like you would like to fashion your life or your business or your career or your impact, you know, after, but is also a person that takes an interest in you. So a mentor is not just you looking up to a person that you would like to fashion your life after whose achievements, it doesn't have to be in the same field, by the way. They don't have to be in the same field as you. I had a lot of mentors that were not in the same field as mentors that I'd actually, I don't have a single mentor in my field. All my mentors are in different fields. So they don't have to be from the same field as you, but it's definitely a person who's had success in the area that they're in that you would like to, you know, imitate, right? I mean, you're only going to spend time with a person that you'd like to be like, but also they take an interest in you and they commit to investing in you to help you grow in your area and excel in your field. So they don't necessarily have to come from your field, but they have to understand the context of your field and they have to be invested. They have to be interested and they have to actually so uh, be committed to you that it pains them if they're not being supportive to you, that it pains them if you're not moving 
it literally becomes a relationship where you are yoking with your mentor. Mentorship is not a small thing. Mentorship isn't a casual thing. So as I'm about to go into talking about sponsorship and coaching, I want to say a lot of people would say, Modesto, you're my mentor. If I was your mentor, I would know it because I would also know that I'm investing in equipping you to get to where you, you know, you're going. So there have been quite a few people, and this is one of the gifts that God has given to one of my talents to mentor others, but it is a very serious commitment and it tasks you. It takes of you to pour all of you out to this other person because you want to see them succeed in their area. So your mentor should be so invested in your success, career, business, life, whatever it is that you're doing, that they attach their lives to you. They attach their success to seeing you succeed. You could be in the same field. You could be the same organization. And you might even find your mentor is a person who is over you. You succeed, you know, like they pass on the baton to you. Or it could be in another area, but point is, it's not just you admiring them, wanting to be like them. It's them also committing. That's what a mentor is. And we're going to talk about how important it is to have a mentor. But I'll also, when we get to talk about mentorship later in the week, I'll also talk to you about how to choose mentors wisely. Because just because a person is a person you look up to, like you can emulate them like a role model and you approach them, just because they say yes, doesn't mean that they're going to be a great mentor for you. There are certain things you need to look out for and you need to press in for out of your mentor as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. I think it's going to be fun when we start talking about, you know, how to then leverage the relationships you have after understanding who you have around you so that you can excel. The next person I want to talk about is a sponsor. This is something that we may not have heard about much, except, you know, when you're thinking somebody's sponsoring my education or is sponsoring my event, sponsoring, you know, something in that respect. A sponsor is also an individual that takes official responsibility for the actions of another. So this is a person who says, I am going to put my name. I'm probably going to put my funds. I'm probably going to put collateral for this person. I am sponsoring them which then means should anything happen to this person, you're going to look for me. Ooh, that just hit me in a different way, right? A sponsor says, I am taking official responsibility for this person. Hey, Abigail, I see you. So that if anything you know, happens to them or anything that they do, you are actually immediately going to come to me and say, your person. The person you sponsored, the person you proposed, the person you recommended, the person you referred, the person that you signed on the dotted line and said that you vouch for them, they did X, Y, Z. People will go to your sponsor. And you will see as we continue this week why it's so key for us to have sponsors. Your sponsor will probably, you know, it's still going to be a person who, you know, is accomplished, whether their character, their competence, their experience, their networks, uh, their brand is something that you can leverage from. And what's really, really key to see about sponsors is that powerful. Sponsors have access to rooms and networks and decision making that you don't have access to. Sponsors are usually in the same organization as you. So when people are making decisions about your salary, people are making decisions about your promotion, people are making decisions about whether or not to include you on some great task force or something that's happening, and you are not in the room, your sponsor will say, I will vouch for Bobby. I will vouch for um, Gina. I will vouch for Hussein. I know for sure. Like I will put my name down and I will put, you know, my signature down on so-and-so. And you will see as we go into the topic of sponsorship, it is so key to have a sponsor because a lot of decisions that are being made about us are made about us when we're not there. You know, it's kind of like personal branding, right? Your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So you build a good personal brand, they will speak well. But the, the difference between just people speaking of you and, per, and, and, and a sponsor is a sponsor is not just people who speak to you. A sponsor will stand up. 
a sponsor will stick their neck out for you. A sponsor will say, I sign on the dotted line officially, give them the opportunity. They mess up, come back to me. A sponsor must know you and know your work and know your value and be ready to put their name next to yours. Your mentor, people may not really actually get to know of your mentor. Your mentor is a person you have a personal relationship with. Maybe they are known in your circles, but they may not even know. People may not know that you have you know, a mentorship relationship with them. But your sponsor is going to one day reveal themselves. Your sponsor will open their mouth and say, okay, as you're considering these people, I'm definitely saying go with Patricia. I am saying Jack is a person for this job. I think Yuma would be great. And so of all these people, you know, if on every other assessment, we find them to be equal, go with Yuma. That's what a sponsor does. Now, somebody said, always enjoying your skills. And I thank you so much. Always enjoying coming to share with you guys. I want us to win together, guys. Yeah, I, I mean, if you do not see that by now, I pray one day you will see that this is what my heart is invested in. I am so invested in equipping you for this globally competitive world that we're now doing business and careers and influencing and impacting in. Then the last one, right? This is the role that I have currently really pushed forward in what I do to individuals, to organizations. You know, I'm known as a consultant to individuals. You've mostly known me since I've started coming out with these lives as a coach, right? A career and business coach. I'll tell you, I am your career advisor, your, you know, your business consultant. And I'd say I'm an executive leadership coach. What is a coach then? A coach is an experienced person who supports a learner, you know, in a particular field or client in achieving a specific personal or professional goal by providing training and guidance. So when we're talking about how to leverage your support system, you're going to have to get very specific with your coach. Your coach is not your mentor. You know, a person you look up to, a person that is good in their field, a person who would want your success and is invested in making sure you get there. Your coach gets very technical. Your coach is going to help you with the strategies. It's going to help you with creating plans and with, with you know, with the actions and the tactics. It's going to help you measure how you are going to achieve a personal or professional goal. So especially with a coach, you're really going to think about sports, right? Understand this. And this is a premise with which I come to you guys daily. My assumption is that I'm speaking to leaders. My assumption is that you're already hot stuff. My assumption is that you're already moving and shaking things in your sphere at your level. That is my assumption. Nobody here is just starting out and I'm out here, you know, being your savior. I am not your savior. You are already going somewhere, men and women who are already doing things. The purpose of a coach then is to help you do it better. It's to help you in an area where maybe you do not address it. It will compromise your entire journey, your entire goal, professionally or personally. That would be my role as a coach. That is a role of a coach that you're already in the game. You're already on the league. You are already, you know, a player and a significant one of that. And I come in next to you, a coach comes in next to you and helps you to move a specific goal, whether it's personally or professionally, so that you can achieve your goal, so that you can achieve your end game. That is the purpose of, of a coach. So if you're going to work with the coach, you need to understand that I must have specific goals and specific aspirations that we are working together towards. So you must challenge your coach. Can we get specific here? There are certain goals I need to reach by a certain time in a certain area of my life, or I won't get this, whether they're financial, whether they're impact, whether it's character whether it's competence, whether it's experience, whether it's actually having the network and how to bridge, you know, go into those networks so that you can have greater influence. They should be specific goals. Therefore, you must also allow your coach to speak into the specifics of helping you get there. Some people do not want to be seen naked. Some people are like, no, you do not touch that. How dare you say that about me? That's my job. 
It's my job to see you a shining star going wherever God put in you, you know, to go and achieve and do the great things you're doing, but to see the areas in which you still need help with that you can work on to get you there and to go through all the rigors, all the discipline, all the regimen of what it takes to hone those skills so that you can get there. All right. Speaking a little bit too much on this thing. Why? Because I'm a coach, you know. So that's the difference between a hero, role model, mentor, sponsor, and coach, especially the mentor, sponsor, and coach. A mentor is a person you want to emulate your life after just as you would a hero, uh, sorry, a role model, right? And, and, and they're invested, truly invested to pour out all of them to help you succeed in your field. A mentor should be for you, not against you. A mentor should never see you as competition. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm going into, you know, remaining content. They should really be invested in seeing you shine. You shining should be their number one um, priority in that, in that mentorship relationship. But you must also take their advice. You must also, you know, be serious about, you know, working with a mentor. A sponsor is a person truly, I honestly think a sponsor takes the greatest risk because they put their name, they sign their name, they probably put their collateral to help you achieve your goals, to let other people know that they so trust you, that they so believe in you, that they so see you know, your potential and they, they think that you're, you're so solid a character, that should they put your name down, that should they accept you and take you on on something, that you will deliver exactly as you say, mm -hmm. and should you not, they will take the blame. And a coach is saying, all right, so you're invested. You're going where you want to go. You're big time. You're great at what you do. And you'll certainly get where you need to go. But there are these certain things, whether it's character, it's competence, whether it's personal, professional, that you need to work on to make sure that you hit this thing strong. And you will work through specific goals to allow you to grow into the star that you already is showing great potential of being and to be able to achieve your milestones, to achieve your end game and to sustain that level of workmanship, that level of success. So this entire week, we're going to talk about how then do you approach people, you know, you've got a hero, a role model, a mentor, a sponsor, a coach. How do you approach them? How do you leverage their presence? How do you work with them? What do you do so that you can really bring um, what you need to, to the relationship? And how do you hold them accountable? At the end of the day, no matter who is walking with you, this is your life. These are your goals. These are your aspirations. You better make sure you're getting what you need to get out of that mentor, out of that sponsor, out of that coach. And there will be some subtleties you need to learn. Like you cannot manhandle a sponsor. You can't force a sponsor. A sponsor needs to have observed you, needs to know you well enough, needs to be able to vouch for you, but you can't force them. You can't force them to. They have to so believe in you that they would do it of their own volition. And they may not even tell you that they're going to go pound the table for you to say you absolutely must have him. You absolutely must recruit her. They may not even tell you. They will just do it. And maybe someday somebody will tell you, you know what? You're in this space because so-and-so. We were considering people, you weren't even, like you were just one of the many. And they ab absolutely convinced us that you would be the person for this job or for this opportunity. And your coach, your coach is no joke. Your coach is supposed to help you get uncomfortable to remove the things in your comfort zone that were keeping you at a certain level and help you catapult and get out of that by practicing new discipline, by changing your mindset, by looking at things differently and, and, and performing differently. I cannot wait to go you know, deeper into this. And listen, if you're in a position where you're thinking, I'm only going so far as an individual, this is your week to start considering who is on my team? Who is on my championship team? What, you know, what does my support system look like? Who exactly is doing what? Think about all the people that surround you in life. What purpose do they serve? What are they there to do? If you are clear about that and you can look at them and say, okay, role model, you know, maybe, oh, fine. Hero, role model, mentor, sponsor, coach. You can see them playing one of these roles. Ask yourself, what exactly are they doing? And how exactly am I leveraging? How am I pulling all of this that I need out of them? And the other thing is, how responsible am I? What am I doing that they can see, they can get the satisfaction? What's in it for them to walk with somebody like me? How can I better position myself so that it makes it 
more enjoyable. It makes it um, more meaningful, more effective for them to work with me. So you're going to look at your life right now. You're going to look at everybody that surrounds you. If you cannot see, especially, you know, role models. Do you know why role models are important? Role models are important because you need to have somebody you can look up towards that, that you find to be a stretch, right? Somebody you can look up towards and say, wow, like when I have it together, that's what my life will look like. Otherwise, you can be comfortable with the level of life and thinking and performing that you are at right now. Everybody needs to have somebody else they can look up towards. Of course, you know, I can hear my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, I look up to Jesus. I'm happy for you that you can look up to Jesus. I look up to Jesus too. But I need human beings right here on the earth right now who are doing certain things so that I can tell my mind it is possible. It can be done. If another human being can do it, I can do it. If somebody can come out of these circumstances and achieve it, I can come out of these circumstances and achieve it. If somebody who came from even worse situations than me can do it, I who's had these kind of opportunities can certainly do it and do even better. That's 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 just the power of having role models, even if you don't contact them. Just people you're seeing out there, you're like, nah, this thing is done. Another human being can do it, I can do it. A mentor is key. A mentor is a person who'll slap you upside the head and say, get it together, I'm watching you. I went and I told on myself on somebody, a person who I asked to be a mentor. She asked, you know, maybe to maybe be an accountability partner, not a mentor. And I said, listen, you're on social media. You're older than me. You've gone ahead. And I think I think you're doing you're doing great things. Can you please? I allow you to speak into my life. Can you please, you know, make sure I'm going the right way? I don't want to get things to get get into my head. I don't want to feel like I'm this little superstar doing things and I, I could get out of control. It's not enough for me to say, oh, oh God, you know, I'm accountable to God. Mm -mm. I want flesh and blood to say, hey, Modesta, so I heard you on that live today. Oh, Modesta, so I'm seeing you going on this topic. Oh, Modesta, you know, I'm watching just so that my heart and my thinking and my and my delivery is right. Or maybe I'm settling for less. And they're like, look, you're far greater than this little thing that you're doing right now. Somebody here, right here just said, you're, you're playing small. You should be doing something bigger. I like that. That challenges me. So you need a you know you you need a mentor, a sponsor. God bless sponsors. We'll just put their name, put their money, put their you know their resources. They will put their assets and say, "I'm for this person." You know, let them have that loan, let them have that credit, let them you know get that position. And a coach, a coach, no joke. A coach is Modesta here. A coach is like, look. I see great potential of you, but nobody's going to eat potential. Potential will get you nowhere. Potential will actually get you sleeping because you're sitting there, you're thinking, ah, well, I have potential. I could get there someday. Someday is no day at all, people. Someday is no day. There is no day called someday. You need to work today for your aspirations because that dream will never come to, to realization unless you start building it daily. You said building out the, the blocks that make up that dream. And so people like me come along and say, I see you. You're looking good. You're looking right. But you've got this, you know, that, that's not working for you. And you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're saying people are doing that to you. People are not doing that to you. You're letting people do that to you. Or you're saying you're spending your money this. You can't do this. Well, what I'm seeing is you can actually do that with your money instead and then put it like that. So how can we work towards that? What are you willing to do? What are you committed to do right now for you to get there? And then I'll be there to hold you accountable. Hey, so you said you're committed to this. I'm watching you right now, but this is not where you're going. One of those people like, oh my goodness, you're in my face. Yes, in your face, because I'm invested in your success. All right, people, this is just the introductory session. We're going to talk about these things all week. Okay, fine, for the next four days. And I pray that as you're looking at your life this week, you're going to start aligning the people that you need on your championship team. If you've enjoyed this, please share this video far and wide. Please, let's, let's get it together, guys. These things I talk about Africa being the leading economic region in the world, these things I talk about, you know, us being globally competitive, it's not just a thing I say, it's not a thing, it's not like a like a branding thing. This is a thing I know for sure. I know this from God. I know this. I, I know what can come out of you leaders. I know. I know what you're going to do to economically absolutely shape this world, which is why I'm speaking to career and business leaders. So let's get it right in every area of our lives. Look at, look at me. I feel like a coach today. Let's get it right in every area of our lives. And let's make sure that we build the support system because it, it doesn't have to be this one person who's just great, who's shining in everything, and nobody else will vouch for them. Nobody else is walking with them. 
they're wise in their eyes. Like they are convinced that they're doing a great thing all by themselves. Don't be fooled by likes. Do not be fooled by social media likes. You need to have people who are professional, people who are credible, people who are relatable, people who have access, people who have power, who show you the way because they have gone it themselves and who are invested to make sure that you succeed. You need that on your team. And this week, you're going to position to do just that. All right. Much love. Catch up with you on tomorrow's feed. Let me get these things off. Share this far and wide. Go to Purpose and Excellence uh, Academy on YouTube. You can watch that video on, um, on the power of partnerships. Subscribe and please tell everybody you care about to subscribe. I am invested in making sure that we get it. There is no reason. Listen, for as long as I exist, no one in your network, you, should be left behind in career and business. Matter of fact, I even go into, you know, relationships and life. I even go into finances. Nobody in your network, if you came on this thing and there's somebody in your network that you have access to that is not able to excel, is not being effective at what they're doing, that's on you. If you guys don't excel, that's on me. But I don't have access to the people you have access to. You do. Share this far and wide. I'm not getting anything when you share this on Instagram and, and Facebook. Guys, so do not think, oh, my is doing this because she's making money. I'm not making money off of Facebook and Instagram. But I really do want us to be globally competitive. I am so invested in changing the narrative about Africa. But I'm not out here trying to get the rest of the world to change their narrative. I'm just asking us to daily live up to the greatness that we truly already have. And that'll change and still silence every conversation and every voice ever that's questioned as to whether 